Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special Waterline episode with me, Sab Octavian, and today we have a special guest. Our executive producer, Arthur, nickname... Evan, I guess. Evan. So, we want to talk to you about recent announcement we made in DevVlog regarding CV rework. I'm sure many of you are very interested in this topic. And just to elaborate and remind you, uh, we announced that CV rework is almost over that is approaching the release, that we want to release rework carrier gameplay in update 080, which basically everybody understands that will be next year. So we had a lot of comments, discussions, feedback from you guys, and Arthur even have a list yeah, many, of your questions. Pages. And we feel it's fair and good to comment on your concerns and to explain you better uh, in depth why we made specific decisions, how we're going to handle carriers after rework, and overall clarify the situation for you. Yeah, let's do it. So I guess let's start with the, with the easiest question. Are we doing this stuff for consoles? No. So this is something that I really want to comment to get rid of for the rest of the discussion. Uh, World of Warships PC, along with you guys, our players, is the most valuable thing for many of us and for the studio in general. It's our successful, accomplished game, and from any point of view, it just doesn't make sense to endanger the, this game experience because of new title. Of course, these guys work with us. they like located one floor. Uh, I won't say above or, <laughs> or not, but... Uh, they use our 3D content. They, of course, base their game on our core gameplay. That's correct. And I'm sure that if the rework uh, is released as we plan, and when it's polished and uh, the experience is good, they will use it for the product, of course. Yeah, of course. And the same applies to them. If they come up with something cool, then we'll use whatever they have. Yeah. But from any point of view, like from professional business point of view, just from any point of view, it doesn't make sense to make the experience in your main and accomplished product worse just to affect timeline of console product. They have their own timeline and CVs are not a hard requirement for release. They can live without CVs for some time, it's fine. They have good engaging gameplay between three uh, classes yep. and that's enough. So it is not done because of consoles. If it's compatible with console, it is a bonus for us, and that's it. Let's uh, move to the, to the nitty-gritty stuff. So what about balancing carriers? Yeah, we heard uh, a lot of concerns regarding like every, everything that can be balanced, like DPS of uh, anti-air guns, like flooding damage, fire damage, accuracy, everything. Of course, uh, there are a lot of parameters in our game to tweak and tune. But the problem is that you cannot really uh, recreate full behavior of players on beta test. They behave differently. Uh, even those who like dedica dedicated testers who understand the goals of the test, they cannot emulate the whole environment for us. So the goal of beta test is to provide some general proof of concept, to gather feedback, some pain points to resolve, to do pre preliminary balancing. And we actually, when I uh, did the last waterline with uh, Danny Volkov, we explained this as well. But it's inevitable that uh, all tweaking of individual ships and uh, the balancing between ships will be done on production, unfortunately. We will have uh, some period of unstable metagame, probably, I hope it will be like one or two updates. I hope for like one or two updates, we'll be able to gather all information and uh, tweak all settings properly. After that, uh, I think we will be mostly done. And uh, I think it's worth mentioning that for our premium, premium carriers, owners, we understand that uh, we will have to balance them as well. And uh, we will offer you a refund option for the whole duration of this rebalancing. So basically, uh, before we close the refund option, yep. you will know that this ship is in final state and you'll make educated decisions whether to refund it or keep it, if you like it or not. Yeah, that's awesome. So one of the other things that you guys have listed as, as uh, one of the pain points of the community is the fact that we've chosen to remove direct control of 
uh, of carrier hulls. We've heard many, many different comments on that from it's super dumb to we really need it for gameplay. So let's break that stuff down for you guys. So is it really needed for gameplay? Well, first of all, uh, I really, I really noticed that May, maybe some players just didn't participate on beta or they didn't have time to explore it, but we did not remove direct controls. We removed direct controls simultaneously with controlling squadron. So basically now you are sitting only on one unit, one avatar. You're either controlling the squadron. If you want to switch to carrier, you can control it both with tactical map or with your regular uh, keyboard keys. But if you control carrier, basically you send your squadron away. So uh, the main issue here is an ability to control the ship and the squadron at the same time. Uh, and we had this opportunity in the old gameplay where you typically could controlled a uh, squadron only with mouse and you could control carrier both plotting course and tactical map or just using your keys. Uh, we do think that it's not crucial for current gameplay at core because in this CV rework we shifted our focus heavily to squadron control and uh, we are like leaving RTS uh, type of gameplay where you need to take care of more than one unit at a time basically and uh, we are moving to action-packed gameplay. Uh, this actually allows us to make it more balanced, more accessible and visually more entertaining. So that, that also feeds into the immersion argument, right? Because since we're going away from this RTS uh, type gameplay, where anyway you didn't have a lot of immersion of controlling your carriers because you were always in this top-down god mode, right? And we're focusing on squadron control. We want you to have the immersion in the squadron avatar or with the squadron avatar, with controlling your planes. That's where we want the immersion to be with flying through flak and all well, of that yeah. awesome stuff, right? So, but what about torpedo dodging? That was the, probably the most immersive part of carrier control so, before. Yeah, to, to break it down, uh, let's discuss why do our players uh, want this feature? Like for, for immersion, like probably it's not a big argument because you still get to see your carrier, you can control your carrier, you see takeoff, landing, and overall in this new yeah. mode, you spend more time uh, observing, observing some visual candy than in RTS mode where you basically operate it with UI icons for the most time of the battle. But uh, carrier like should position itself, of course. Uh, I think that for uh, most of the tasks, uh, for example, plotting some course in the beginning of the battle, whether you want to hide behind an island or uh, be safe and just try to, to go to map border, uh, autopilot is okay. And we heavily improved it, especially yeah. for some cases where, for example, you hit an island and you want to reverse, so autopilot now can reverse in the latest uh, update of this rework. Uh, but there are still some cases uh, where you really need direct control. For example, torpedo dodging, as you told. Well, uh, in this case, for now, we believe that if you, carrier players, players want to they direct the control how and dodge torpedoes, if the situation is that critical, they have a choice. They can either switch to carrier and forget about squadron for some time, or they can try to defend themselves with squadron, but not both at the same time. I mean, this is kind of a reward for those who reach carrier. And this is a choice for carrier player. And we think from the point of view of balance and from the point of view of focusing attention on uh, one unit, on squadron, this is fine. However, we understand that uh, when players actually get to play it on live, uh, meta will change. There will be some combat situations. There will be some scenarios that probably we don't know about yet or that are not that visible in beta test. And we will see. Definitely, maybe, yeah. maybe this feature will be worth developing. Maybe, like simultaneous control of carrier and squadron, or some algorithm where, for example, as players suggested, you get to switch to your CV and your squadron just stays there until you switch back. Maybe it's worth developing, but we don't know yet. We're not sure about that, and we're absolutely sure that we need to concentrate on core gameplay first, on something that players will spend most of the time doing: controlling squadron. So, for now. This is no for release, but consideration for future if it will be the really the thing that players need. One of the other things that players mentioned that they disliked is the concept of automatic consumables. So maybe let's break that down for them, including like how much depth we believe is going to be in the 
new uh, squadron controls that's going to supplement uh, the depth of gameplay and why we believe that, that consumable usage for carriers specifically is not really that critical of a thing for players. I fully agree that automated consumables on CV Hall is at least like very unusual idea, at least maybe controversial, experimental, but we have reasons to try it. So uh, let's assume that, let's talk about other classes. You manage uh, all consumables on battleships, destroyers and cruisers manually. And we think it makes sense because you're playing on that exact unit, the situation around you, you observe it, you make decisions, like you have awareness of this situation, uh, utilizing your DCP, healing, smoke, support consumables, this makes sense. With carriers, most of the time, people will spend on squadron. And squadron... This is a new avatar. Yes, it's your avatar and it has a set of consumables. Moreover, each squadron type has like different independent consumable timers, so we manage all of them. And despite the old potato jokes we have, like a lot of our players have really hard time keeping attention on the situation around carrier when they control squadron. This is a fact. And it's not because they can't manage uh, two things at the same time as some uh, players suggested. It's just because you're uh, involved with squadron gameplay. Yes. Like this is action. This, this is immersion. Yes, this is action gameplay. And somewhere you have your CV how to take care about. So our concept here is to concentrate all management, micromanagement, uh, all decision making, like most of the gameplay, on squadron, while keeping CV how uh, simple, basically. Uh, and we hope with uh, usage of balance settings for flooding, for fire duration, and uh, consumables cooldown, we managed. I think we managed to achieve the effect that uh, like CV how kind of takes care about itself. Uh, we don't think it's really exploitable or something because right now with current settings for fire and flooding, basically there is almost zero situations where you want not to, for example, trigger your DCP. Like if you catch fire, well, if you like catch flooding, usually player just pushes the button. And in this case, it's not, uh, almost always, it's not a real decision, it's just reaction. And we just make this reaction automatic. This is like what, uh, how we want to approach this. Uh, we hope it will work and we pay a lot of attention to the balance settings of consumables, duration, cooldowns uh, to make it like comfortable and to allow players to concentrate on uh, controlling squadron, performing attacks and playing like playing the gameplay that was the whole point of rework. Basically we're automating the stuff that, uh, that we believe is not really going to be part of the core gameplay anymore of carriers. And that's fine. But a lot of people have also said that because we're doing that, we're kind of dumbing down carrier gameplay and uh, we're dumbing down carrier gameplay a lot uh, or much too much. So uh, guys, we also want to tell you uh, a bit about what the depth go is going to be in the new uh, carrier gameplay. So we will have uh, a lot of different stuff for people to do with their avatar. It's not going to be just point and click as it mostly was uh, in the old RTS system, but you will have a lot of different things uh, to manage as well. One of these things will be um, AA avoidance. So obviously in the new system, the, the close and mid-range AA aura will just deal damage over time, but you will have this mini gameplay of avoiding the flak bubbles that come that are spawned by the long range uh, AA aura, right? It's going to be uh, a risk reward kind of gameplay where you either go uh, full in with your attack and you take the damage through the bubbles or you make sure you avoid them, but then you might have harder time in aiming, right? So what else is there? I think that uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, we'll get a bit uh, back because uh, before talking about this gameplay depth, I just want you guys to understand that this rework is massive and we don't have uh, live data from live servers. So obviously we don't want CVs to be simpler or to be dumb compared to other classes because we think that other classes are fine. They have tactical depth. Yep. And like what we can do 
is to create several features or create some like areas in game design uh, where there is depth, skill, player development, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Whether they all will work on life, we cannot be sure. And we know that you guys are very good at finding new tactics, so maybe when the CV rework is live, you will find out, find out some more areas for skill development and we will adjust like our concept. But uh, I want just to think about this question. How many games do you need to play on a battleship, for example, to fully comprehend this class? Like starting from just simple firing your guns, target prediction, then managing your consumables, uh, knowing where to trigger, uh, when to trigger DCP or not to trigger, avoiding torpedoes, positioning, angling, uh, and overall strategic planning where what that is involved in battleship, basically. It's I think it's far beyond like 10 battles or something. It will require a lot of time. It took me more than 10. <laughs> well, maybe we are potatoes, but we really, really doubt that everybody like fully comprehends all depth of gameplay just in like 10 battles. And we think that uh, if we did it right with game design uh, things that we will talk about right now, you guys will discover a lot of depth and opportunities to master carriers. And it's not just point to click. Of course, uh, all old RTS gameplay was point and click, but it contained like a strategic depth because you had different units under your control. Uh, now you have one squadron and uh, Arthur just uh, elaborated on AA, uh, on maneuvering. But we also have uh, one of the main aspects of squadron control, and this is performing an attack. So I think that this is very uh, interesting and uh, rich area of gameplay, which kind of sometimes goes underestimated. Uh, when you perform attack, uh, you should not just select targets and click. Uh, you, you can actually you can make choice uh, of your speed. You can make choice of maneuver. You have this uh, scalable uh, dispersion of your torpedoes, bombs, and rockets. Uh, you have this possibility of plan attack earlier, get better dispersion, but you have to plan more carefully. Or you can launch, uh, for example, attack quicker. And this, uh, when we were observing how players behave on beta tests, uh, really uh, not everybody used this to full extent yet. The design team told me that you can do some shenanigans with bombs now when you're attacking. Yes, you can. Like AP bombs, especially. Uh, AP bombs, which we know is very uh, controversial subjects right now, uh, knowing about how they work yeah. on our current uh, and game. And being Citadel. Yes. So basically, right now on production server, on live server, AP bombs are like simplified shells, that AP shells that hit you 90 degrees from above. That's it, basically. Yeah. With this new gameplay, uh, right now we, uh, design, we designed so that the IGN uh, carriers will have AP bombs and they will be like mandatory. They won't be optional, it will be like their national flavor. We'll talk about national flavors later, I think. Yep. But the point is that uh, when we have this carefully uh, designed and emulated attack runs with each uh, squadron type, you have uh, actually more, much more realistic uh, behavior of bombs. So basically, when you initiate the attack run on uh, dive bombers, IGN dive bombers, you have this trajectory when they start diving, then they start exiting the dive, and uh, basically throughout all this trajectory, you can release the bombs. And now it will affect the angle and the fly trajectory of these bombs. And it will affect how will you hit your target. For example, if you want to penetrate the deck, you will probably want to release them a bit earlier when just the, the bombers are diving. But you also can try to recreate some kind of broadside hit because you have this period when your bombers exit the dive and they can release bombs almost like horizontally, which will work differently against I different see. targets. And now AP bombs can ricochet basically. And now angle of the like angle of impact is not always 90 degrees. They interact with armor now. And you can like play around this. So I that's probably going to be hard to master as well, right? This will be hard to master. And at the same time, uh, of course, with some fine balancing, we believe that we will be able to reduce or maybe even remove the frustrating aspect of AP bombs. Because right now they're either doing nothing or blapping you. 
and uh, the only skill here is uh, choose choose a target and do target prediction. Now you will have all this gameplay around when to release them, and they will interact with armor much in much more complicated way. Ship positioning is obviously still going to be very important, and as as you mentioned before, you can you're going to be able to still use the. Um, the minimap to position your carrier and it's going to be improved so that you can have a bit more detailed control over, over that movement of the carrier. Um, but what about the, the depth of managing all of the squadrons that you now have? Now we have three types versus the two that we uh, had in the old system. Do they have any anything special? Well, uh, I mean, I think everybody who is interested in the CV rework knows that uh, they are different because of weaponry. But there is also like the idea of uh, of these uh, penalties of losing uh, your, for losing your planes and rotating uh, the squadron. So as I told you before, uh, each squadron manages the consumables like in parallel. Each squadron type manages the consumables separately. Uh, so, for example, if you just concentrate on one squadron, squadron type, you obviously will lose more plane. It will require you more time to prepare. You will be able to dispatch less uh, fighter squadrons or dispatch them less frequently. And you can find yourself like uh, being crippled uh, late, uh, in the late game because you won't have enough planes to do like full squadron uh, takeoff. So the fighter consumable that I see on one squadron is not the same fighter consumable that I have on another no, like, squadron. Like, like uh, I think that gameplay around fighters is like separate topics. But yes, basically, if you really want, if the situation is like you need it, you can uh, quickly put all three uh, uh, squadron types up in succession and place fighter squadron with each of them, mm -hmm. and they will be active for some time. So you can cover like more more area, but you'll in this case you're concentrating on support mostly because you won't have time to do proper attack runs. Right. And each squadron, uh, of course, suits a different target best. But it's not only like that. It's not like you always should target this ship with this squadron because with this direct squadron control, it really makes sense sometimes, not always, but it makes sense to target some parts of the ship. For example, if you have. Uh, IGN uh, torpedo bombers, which have like narrow torpedo cone towards the end, you can try to target specifically uh, bow or aft uh, because instead instead of middle of the ship, if you want to more chances of flooding because there is no torpedo protection there. But uh, speaking about, I think more uh, more frequent and obvious things, and we saw some players and streamers do that. You can target specific part of the ship with bombs and rockets because they interact with armor and. Uh, for example, uh, if you're speaking about HE bombs, you can set fire to specific parts of the ship. With direct control, you can do that. So basically, it's uh, another aspect of depth and control, but it's action-based, not RTS-based. Since IG, IGN torpedo bombers will have this narrow space, it's going to be, like I said, a bit more precise. You can probably do, use that as map control, right, as well. Uh, what's, like, what tactics we hope you guys will discover with IGN bombers is that if you're very good with target prediction, you can try to do long shot with them, especially in high tiers. Basically, IGN uh, torpedo bombers will have a good torpedo range. I think it should be about maybe eight kilometers on uh, high tiers. That's they have cool. decent torpedo speed, not like not 76 knots, but something around 50 probably. Uh, and these are good torpedoes. And they have narrow cone and it's like the narrowest part in, in the end. So basically you can try to launch uh, your torpedo volleys with these torpedo bombers from the from the like farthest distance instead of trying to approach target closely. That will save your plane HP because you will be less uh, damaged by AA. And uh, IGN torpedo bombers also, well, we're also speaking about national trades, but I cannot avoid it because IGN torpedo bombers will have good concealment. And if you buff concealment of IGN torpedo bombers, you'll be able to stealth torp sometimes. That's pretty cool. And uh, guys, right now you can also do concealment differently because we've also introduced line of sight for squadrons now. Yeah, fortunately by reducing dramatically the number of squadrons in the air simultaneously and by concentrating on squadron gameplay, now they have basically fair visibility system, visibility and detectability system, where you uh, draw line of sight from central squadron 
to like observation uh, call node on the ship of the ship, and now it can collide with terrain and small screen. So whenever you have maps with high mountains, you can conceal a squadron behind it. But with torpedo bombers, it's especially useful because when you do torpedo bombers attack run, they naturally descend. They, they descend and they uh, like they fly at very low altitude for some time and you can use a lot of terrain as cover for them while during uh, during your attack run because you have this time and basically you can stab a battleship from the corner of, of some mountain with them. Or you can surprise somebody who's hiding inside or behind the smoke because he's gonna see you above the smoke but when you go down yeah, you're gonna yeah. disappear. So line of sight yes line of sight interacts with smoke as with uh, kinda like terrain but it's it's not terrain but I think I mean smoke smoke cloud uh, really interrupts line of sight. It ha it has some yeah. height and uh, some volume, and basically you can just you can like try ships. It. Yes, yes. So, uh, are there any other tricks that you can mention? Uh, we think that it's kind of obvious, but now when you have this wing mechanics, where you can uh, launch several attacks from one squadron, and you probably will want to launch several attacks from one squadron. Uh, you can like try to trick your enemy into uh, wrong positioning. So, for example, you can quickly uh, perform first torpedo drop to bait enemy to perform evasive maneuver, and then quickly do another torpedo drop to catch him. Or if you can do that, you can interact with your team basically, and well, the current carriers can do it as well, but you can, still can bait the enemy, for example, into showing broadside for your team. And it can work, and because you have these multiple wings, you can do it in quick succession, and actually, uh, we think that this is a very good uh, place for skill versus skill, because uh, it's you, like controlling squadron, and your enemy controlling the ship, and it's like game of prediction, what will he do? Uh, is he going to bait me, do another attack run or not? And I think it can be. The, uh, if we talk about some good players, I think the, we will we will witness some very interesting situations in the game and interesting smart play around this. It's a bit like brawling battleships, right? In that yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that sense, yes. And about tips and tricks, I think that it's worth elaborating a bit more on how AA works now. Like uh, we have this machine guns and glorious uh, close range AA. It works mostly the same. We have, a, we have some area where they apply damage. Um, I think that they apply damage to one plane at a time, like shooting at, at different planes, but still, it's like, it's, it's, not, un, it's not under player control, and it's not uh, really under CV player control. But what now is more interactive is long and medium range AA. Uh, basically, you started with it, but uh, I want to explain that right now, long range and mid range AA uh, kind of captures your vector, your speed, uh, so the movement parameters, uh, and it like shoots with this prediction. So you can try to trick it. Basically, it places all these AA explosions in front of you, and you can play not only with your steering, you can play with throttle, because uh, if you change throttle uh, and you do this maneuvering, you'll basically... Uh, Throw off the aim of yeah, the AA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So how, how often does it does that? It shoots every few seconds, right? No, I mean, it's, it shoots like almost simultaneously, but it it's, uh, captures your movement every few seconds. So you can trick it because... Uh, so whenever you see an AA explosion, you can basically start changing your... Something like this. I think that uh, this is half mechanical skill. You just need to... Uh, I don't think there's a reliable and good way to like show it into interface with all these timers. Uh, it's just like a matter of uh, your instinct and catch on like what you should do. It's it's like when you when you actually <laughs> rushing uh, a battleship with a destroyer, and you know that that sometimes you need to turn when he's about to shoot south. You need to turn quickly so he misses basically, and so his aim is messed up. And this is kind of the same type of gameplay. Uh, well, if player ignores it, he or she will fly into a bubbles that will do a lot of damage to the planes. But you, it's a choice as well. If you want this target sure. and you want to, to destroy it quickly, you may sacrifice some planes. But if you want to play safe, you can try to trick this AA system. What about the defensive AA consumable, the lord and savior of our ships? It has changed. Uh, now it just increases the damage 
in the respective guns. Uh, well, you can still like the, the only the only real issue now we have now we want to make it obvious more obvious for player that it's uh, activated. Like you have this enhanced uh, A effects, but it's not that obvious. So we're working on some uh, actual tracer color settings to clearly show that this ship has activated defensive A, so that players actually can make decision whether to engage with it or not. It increases damage from the A. But we also have this new feature about switching sectors. And uh, it basically replaces uh, the old one with control plus, plus click, which we have now. Yeah. Uh, I would like to comment a bit on this decision. We think that basically control plus click was a bit dumb, <laughs> if I may say so, because the only interaction you had is just choose squadron. And then all your A skills and modernizations and A will do the job. It's a choice. It's still a choice. What what uh, like what squadron to target? But it's a very simple choice. And with this sector switching, basically, what, uh, I think it's more interesting because it involves your ship position, your maneuvers. It's not just choosing target and clicking on it. It's choosing side and maneuvering and making sure that you keep the either keep the targets on that side of the ship or that you maneuver somehow, or you switch sides. And uh, what it does, it, it uh, increases the density of this A explosions. So you're creating like tighter fire, fire more, wall. More flak. Yes, more flak. Uh, those players who don't want to play this, they will be like fine. They're not sacri sacrificing all A efficiency. You just, it's just distributed evenly uh, and uh, like you can, you can if, if you're distracted by some other things, like if you're dealing with sur other surface ships, okay, like you, you don't touch it. But if you want really to increase the efficiency of your A, you keep eye on the enemy squadrons, uh, you try to keep them at the side where you have this increased efficiency. And the switching, well, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult in terms of interface, it's just click, choose, and, and that's it. It will take some time though, so we cannot just theoretically switch. You, you, you will have some time to, to make it uh, work. And this is what makes, uh, I think, another uh, place to show this skill versus skill gameplay. Try to bait enemy in switching to the wrong side or doing something like this. And in the future, we might have other places for, for skill to be visible, right? We've said before that, that these carriers that we're working on now are the very basic concept, which includes uh, the basic interaction of dealing damage to other ships, right, by carriers. But in the future, it's possible we'll, we'll have more interactions than just that, including some support interactions, possibly even. Well, I think we can talk about it a bit. It's, it's kind of spoiler, because you mentioned support. So, while uh, we already discussed several places to show skill, like tactical skill, mechanical skill, and some strategic skill, uh, we do know that some of you may want to have like really more complicated gameplay. We know that such gameplay probably won't be that popular, but it still can have place in the game. And we have some plans, it's not like huge announcement or not a huge promise, but we do have some plans. Just to a make, spoiler. Yeah, just a spoiler. To make good use of the carriers which are removed from current tech trees. Yep. And maybe add some new carriers. We're thinking about some alternative line, alternative lines of carriers, but not just you know new ships with some uh, somewhat a bit different settings. We're thinking about some new types of gameplay that may actually evolve. Maybe they will evolve from current CV reworked CVs, or maybe this will be something new. Maybe some new consumables, some uh, new roles in battle, and this could be like new new carrier branches with new gameplay. And uh, well, if we see that. There are players who want and really, really like feel like playing supportive gameplay. This may be like support carriers that will interact with your team in a different way. Yeah, I think especially for competitive, it might be very, yeah, very interesting yeah. since since spotting was mostly the role of carriers there anyway. Uh, so to sum it up, we're kind of we're not taking away all the complexity of the current system, right? We're just reintroducing it. In, in the new Squadron Avatar gameplay. And uh, I think the major point about that is that for us, it's 
good and important to start with not as much complexity as we had in the previous system, but with less and then build up from there once we've introduced it, we've tested it, and we've seen that people are comfortable and kind of getting used to the, to the new system because it's easier to add to a, like a, a small system rather than remove a lot of complexity from a big system. And basically, we will see like real live server interactions, yeah. which will give us much more th thoughts, food for thoughts, to elaborate in the system. I think that uh, speaking about uh, squadron, maybe uh, we'll address another question about fighters because fighters now are consumable. And uh, I noticed a lot of comments where players like felt also that it's simplifying, it's something interesting, like you just push one button and that's it. Well, I'm not sure where you, where you played MOBA games. But yes, I did actually. And, uh, but I'm sure you know that uh, this fighter consumable was inspired by some of the, these mechanics. And it actually had, well, you don't get to menu a strafe and click with your mouse anymore, but uh, this has some tactical meaning. Maybe you care to comment on that as a mobile player. What, you mean the similarities to mobile wards? Yes, I think that's very, very obvious, right? So yeah, so I think that a lot of people will still kind of be unhappy with the fact that they don't have uh, kind of fighters as a, a direct damage or air superiority element. But to be fair, guys, that's actually not, not true in its entirety. You still will have the air superiority element and the gameplay that's associated with it. It's just uh, moved to a slightly different uh, interaction space. So previously you had to manually control uh, your fighter squadrons and fly them around and, and hunt for targets just like you would with uh, your other squadrons versus ships. Now they're moved to being a uh, like map control element which uh, in which you just place uh, basically an AA bubble on a specific area of the map and that's also fine. Um, it doesn't mean it's, it's necessarily sim simpler it just means that you have to readjust your way of thinking about how to use carriers, effect, uh, fighters effectively in the new system, right? As Phil mentioned before, you can uh, kind of prioritize using your squadrons not for damage, but for placing all of these wards in very specific areas of the map in, specific, in a specific time of battle, uh, and, and then prioritize damage in a different time of battle. So there will still be a lot of depth in that system, and ultimately, uh, as we just said, if, if it turns out that there's really not, then we'll just change it again. But we think that right now it's going to be very interesting for, for, for people to figure out how to, to use the new fighter consumables. So to sum up this part again, like rework is almost over, but work has just begun. Basically, the, yeah. Yeah, the rework is something about general core gameplay, and uh, we do have confirmation that it's good, and we'll talk about it a bit later, about our beta test results. But we realize that not of all our design decisions will work as intended. Something new, something new will definitely evolve, with your help, of course, and we'll work from now on on carriers as well. Yes, a lot of our CCs have also said, uh, even those that, that were kind of not super happy with the directions going, they said, we'll, we'll play the shit out of it and we'll give all the feedback that we can to make it the best uh, action gameplay for carriers that we can. And that's awesome. That's what we want to hear. So, Arthur, now I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, no. Because I know that some particular uh, <laughs> game designers gave you a list. Uh, with the preliminary, and no, even not preliminary, basically, with the current concept of uh, national flavors yeah, for carriers. So, while we're not going to speak about British carriers uh, yet, I want... Soon. But soon, we will. Uh, I want you to elaborate on IGN versus USN, because it was always a big topic with uh, community, even uh, with current carriers, and I don't expect people like to pay less attention to it in the future. So, what are the differences? Sure. Why should you play one line or the other line? So why should you play a, a line is, from my point of view, it's mostly down to your preference. Uh, but, I'm sorry. But, so from what, from what the designers told me is, 
um, the, the main difference will be, as you actually mentioned before, that for the Japanese carriers, you'll have this, this long, relatively long torpedo range for, the, for their torpedo bombers and the, the narrow uh, torpedo cone tip that will allow you to have some more precision. Um, they will have good torpedo bomber concealment. Um, they will have good speed on torpedo bombers and dive bombers. Uh, they will have AP bombs on their dive bombers. Uh, but as a trade-off, their plane HP is going to be not super great. So potentially you will have to make more meaningful decisions whether you want to stay in AA longer or shorter periods of time. And uh, the last thing I have here is that their um, rocket uh, spread is going to be not an ellipse, but a circle, which means that, that first of all, you can attack from uh, any, any angle and it doesn't really uh, matter because uh, you, you don't have to position yourself that critically against uh, the way other ships are moving. And uh, if you're maneuvering, it also does not increase in its uh, size. So uh, it's, it's a bit more comfortable to kind of maneuver around with your, with your rocket planes. And versus that, the um, US carriers will have high plane HP and, uh, and they, will be f they will have faster planes on higher tiers. Um, they will have HE bombs and uh, the tier 10 planes will have two torpedoes per torpedo bomber plane. So it will allow you to do a bit heavier drops. And there's one more thing. Uh, oh, actually, there's two more things. So the, the interesting thing, which, which I also found out when I was playing the, the uh, beta test for carriers, was that uh, the US, um, the US uh, rocket planes, they have a choice of rockets on higher tiers. And you can either go cluster rockets, smaller ones, but that, that basically launch a lot, of, uh, a lot of smaller missiles. And uh, you can hang tiny Tims off of the wings. So you then have, uh, I think, only two missiles but uh, they deal a lot of damage and they have a high, high fire chance, which is actually really, really fun. At least for me, because I like more risk reward type of gameplay. So I'd like to like, have two missiles, but at least if they hit, they make a big splash. So that was cool for me. And the other thing that, that's mentioned here is that the um, torpedo bomber spread kind of starts, uh, starts narrowing down very early in the attack run which means that you can potentially reach a very um, very accurate uh, spread and have very accurate aim the longer you aim but it's also more susceptible susceptible to maneuvering so you kind of need to have good planning and and once you start your attack run you you're going to be locked into that attack run but uh, after that you will have a very accurate drop basically you make the decision early as yeah. early as possible Worst thing to admit here is that when I uh, played beta, I didn't pay much attention to all these things. Although, although like I, I realized that there are some nuances and differences, but it, <laughs> I know it can self-proof, but it's, it still self-proves my theory that you cannot apprehend the whole like complexity of it during first battles because during first battles yeah. you're like just you're basically finding targets, clicking on it, and trying to hit it. But then you actually get to understand that. Even uh, with all these nations and squadron types, you have very uh, distinctable features to remember and to use them to, to your advantage. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, same for me. I also didn't catch like, half of the for, stuff that, for, that, that's there. For Especially example, the, the uh, plane speed controls, I didn't get that. And uh, for example, I did notice, uh, I think, on some stream or some impressions that uh, a dude was uh, attacking uh, battleships with AP bombs. Uh, and holding like aim until very, very, very uh, end, which maybe makes sense from like first glance. But as we discussed, basically, and if you hold the aim until very, very end, you uh, worsen your angle, and, you yeah. can, and your bombs might have a flatter trajectory, yes. and then they might bounce. And if, and if you mm -hmm. hope to penetrate deck, you will actually make worse drop. There are there are many things to play around. There are nuances, yeah. yeah. It's a good time to talk about beta and about feedback. Yeah. Because uh, we saw, unfortunately, that uh, many of you feel that like we're pushing this rework despite of uh, opinions, despite of feedback. And I think it's time to cover this and cover the beta results. 
So the general idea was that CV rework, as we all know, and you guys know that it was requested by players. We had a lot of jokes about Year of the Carrier. We really, oh, yeah. we really felt obliged to, to speed up and to find good prototype and start beta test. And our goal was like th there was no there was no question whether we should do rework. The question was how, and what should we do? Um, I think that first of all. Uh, we had three, I think, three beta sessions, three beta periods, and we did some adjustments between them based on player feedback. Uh, and I think that you have a list here just to, just to remind our players uh, what was changed uh, during beta test. Sure. So most of the initial balance changes were, were based on player feedback. Then a lot of the UI settings, including the plane reserves UI, were also done uh, based on player feedback then uh, the camera settings, the um, addition of attack timer was also one of the things that was mentioned. And um, basically a lot of the stuff that has to do with how um, player squadrons behave and how they react to input controls from players. So the, the inertia kind of, of planes, how they react to your, your steering commands and uh, how they work with, ter with terrain and how they avoid terrain as well. So all, all of those things were basically and I, and done. I think I think that that really nicely leads us to the question of what if like what if I don't like the concept because all of these things are aimed at improving uh, improving the concept that we offer to the players right but we also have this question whether overall concept the core gameplay was good and we had surveys on each beta period and I think let's just try to share the, some of the results of the survey after third beta test yeah sure. I mean, you know, if if you're going to be one of those players who anyway doesn't like the concept, then basically you can throw away these papers, and you're probably not going to like it anyway. Until maybe yeah. you you know you make the leap of faith and try it, and maybe you'll like it. Yes. But that being said, of course we asked uh, players and the participants of the beta tests whether they liked it and what kind of stuff they didn't like. So uh, on on average, and these are worldwide numbers, uh, thirty-two percent just basically liked it. And those are uh, testers that played... Uh, oh, and for testers that played more than 10 battles in the test, it's actually even higher. It's it's 38% of people who liked it. Of course, we guys understand that there is reverse dependency here. If you didn't like the rework, probably you played less battles. But still, it's worth mentioning that, as far as I remember, almost 40% of those who placed over played over 10 battles during tests like that, like just Simply, I like it, and that's it. Yeah, and that, to be honest, that doesn't sound like a, a large number because people will say, well, that means that the rest didn't like it. No, that's actually not true. 50% of the people who took part also said that, sure, they liked it in general, but there are nuances and stuff that they would like to have changed. And that's fine. That's always going to be the, the case, not even with carers, but we in the game to, We tried to cover uh, this exact list of what uh, they didn't like. Yes, we didn't cover everything. For example, we discussed uh, directly controlling CV while controlling the squadron. This was on the list, that's true. Uh, and we tried to explain you, you why we shouldn't think that it's not, it's not a priority at the moment. But we covered a lot of other things. And I think uh, it's worth covering the percentage of those who just disliked it. I think it was around 15% or something. No, no, it's, it's like 13, I have a number, 13.2% 13 13 disliked it just didn't like it and four percent of people just had no opinion on it so f this is kind of to give you guys an idea of how we make decisions it's not always just a random guess as what some people mean? as some what people have mean? insinuated no but you can see that, that we have a majority audience and we kind of need to cater to that audience as well and of course it's worth mentioning that uh, of course players with uh, most number of CV battles, and I just want to admit it, of course, they had worse results. Uh, the more yeah. CV battles in production tester has, the more inclined, the more he inclined, uh, he is inclined to like give lower rating. But still, it's not. Uh, we gave you we gave you average numbers in the beginning, like global numbers, and it shows that it's not it's not like they're not accepting it. And I think that there was also uh, like some preconception that it's just for noobs, 
for not experienced players and like those who really like know the game, they don't enjoy it. And I think that we had dependency on how many uh, battles you have in production and we broke down the server results on that as well. It's not just high skill players that participated or not just, uh, not just newbies. We basically had people of different uh, skill levels and, and different amounts of battles spent in the current uh, uh, carrier gameplay. Uh, anything between 1500 and like 6,000 6, battles on the, on the live servers. And uh, their results were not significantly different. Their responses were not significantly different. There were people who liked it and didn't like it in, in all of the groups. So um, that kind of just highlights the, the overall acceptance level of the carrier rework, but also the challenges that, that we're going to be facing uh, from now on, just because the challenges will be coming from both the people who are more casual and, and both from the people who are uh, carrier mains and potentially high skill carrier players. There's going to be different challenges for these groups. And I think that's, guys, the bottom line. With your help, with help of beta test, now yeah. we have confidence in current concept, although we don't deny any challenges that we will face after releasing it. We will work closely and very attentively on balancing all the ships and tweaking and fine polishing, but we also will consider some major adjustments should they be necessary and we will look for new adjustments because who knows. Uh, I, can uh, I can also say that we're very excited to see how this will develop. Oh yeah. And yes, this, this is kind of terrifying because it's probably the biggest change that was done to the game since, uh, I think, since Alpha, when we just, when we actually abandoned RTS-style gameplay for, yeah, basically. for, for battleships, uh, destroyers and cruisers and made them more like action-packed. Um, but we decided to go for it because, with your help, we think that the, this concept is good and we just need to work on it with you on my server. Yes, and that's what we're going to do. We hope you'll help us. Thank you, thank you for listening. If you have any other questions, please ask, give us your feedback, and we'll talk more about it later. Yeah, thank you guys.